Nope. What we've got here is failure to communicate. <laughs> Hi, we'd like to welcome you to the Tug and Mule Show. I'm Tug. I'm Mule. And she would like to tell you about our disclaimer. This video is intended for entertainment purposes only, and I'm sure you've figured that out by now. <laughs> Please contact your local representative about your contractual language and your contractual rights. All views expressed in this video are our own and do not reflect that of the company. All opinions shared in this video are protected under the National Labor Relations Act. Thank you. Today, we're going to discuss short-term disability. Not only has it been brought to our attention that people don't know how it works, but there is a process and we've been through it. Not fun, but definitely important information. If you know you're going to have a surgery, you're going to, and you're planning these things, that's better. But if something should happen, there's, there are steps to take to make sure that you have income and insurance while you are out. Well, let's just say that I was snowboarding and I got injured. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should have tried surfing on the beach. Maybe, but instead I went snowboarding when there wasn't any snow because you don't like the snow. No, it was too cold. Right. Yeah. So you shouldn't have done that. Probably not, but I'm certainly not going to go snowboarding when there's snow. <laughs> it's too cold. So obviously I got hurt. So let's say my doctor puts me out for eight months. Okay. And I'm, you're full time? I'm full time. You're covered. Full time, you get up to 12 months. And if I'm part time? You get up to six months. Oh, six months. Six months. Now, it's interesting because in 2013, prior to that in the contract, how long did the full-time part-timers get? 12 months. So that was changed in the 2013... It was. Because in 2013, we went from UPS Healthcare to... Teamsters Western Region and Local 70, 177 Healthcare Plan. So once we got that health care, the part timers were dropped to six months. Were dropped to six months for disability. Yes. So in lieu of our last video, you could actually use that as a proposal if you'd like and propose that the part timers go back to 12 months disability. That's so, a perfect idea. Yes, and that's an, that, that is something that you could use as a proposal. So, now back to this video. Okay. So, now I'm, I need eight months disability. You need eight months. Okay. So, so, now what do I do? You have to, and we're going to put links to all of these on, the, on our Facebook page and um, down below in the description. You need to contact the Teamsters Western Region and Local 177 Healthcare Plan. This is their phone number. You also have to go online. You have to get this form. And this is a fun form. Because you have to fill out this top section. Your doctor fills out the bottom. This very little section in the middle right here, you have to find an HR representative to fill this out. And all it says is your last day worked. That's all it says. So if you're planning a surgery, you can fill this out you know, a couple of weeks in advance, and it'll give you some time to find an HR representative. This form is called the Income Claim Form. They will cover your first seven days that EDD does not cover. So, there are three things that you, four, but 
four things you have to do when you're doing a short-term disability claim. You have to fill out this form, the local 177 health care plan. You have to contact the Hartford. This is their phone number. You can fill out your information on the phone. You can give them all your information. Or you can go online to their website, register, and fill it out and they'll tell you exactly how much time you're entitled to based on your employee ID and your information that you give them. You want to go to the edd.ca.gov website because they are going to pay you while you are out. And that was probably the easiest thing for me was that <laughs> this whole mess was just a, a, a headache from start to finish but it's what you have to do. If you're going to take a withdrawal card from the union because you're going to be out and you don't want to accrue those back dues, you have to call the local. That's their phone number and you need to talk to Anna and tell Anna that you need a withdrawal card unless you are like Rosemary and myself and we just kind of write them a check for our dues for the time that we're off because should we run for office <clears throat> we need to have our dues current whether we run for local or international or delegate or whatever you always want to make sure you have your dues paid if you're planning on running for any local office you have to have two years of consecutive dues so we just always pay our dues and we don't take a withdrawal card so but when you call Anna, you know, they're going to be leaving a message because she handles all of UPS. So you leave a message, she's going to get back to you in a couple of days. And just let her know on the message that you're taking a withdrawal card, the date, you're, the, your last day of work. And then when you return to work, you have to call Anna again and tell her the date you're returning back to work. So <laughs> you have to make sure that you call her twice. Otherwise, you're going to get in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> so, make sure that after you submit this form, I would say give it about a week and make sure you call them to verify that they have received it and that it's approved. It's not approved for, you don't need this for FMLA. I found that out just recently. Um, what do you need for FMLA? Oh, I'm being attacked by June bugs. <laughs> I feel them in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> There's like tons of June bugs out here. Okay, so what do you need for FMLA? FMLA, you still have to contact the Hartford. And you still go through the EDD. And you still do the local for your withdrawal card or pay your dues, however you want to handle that. But for your FMLA, you don't need this form. You do need to make sure that the Hartford, you can check the Hartford's website after you register and it'll show you how many days you have left and if you need an extension. Um, but you will have paperwork for your doctor from the Teamsters Western Region from the Hartford and from the EDD. It gets crazy because I know my doctor charges for each of these. Um, the Hartford kind of messed us up when we were on disability. Uh, we lost our insurance. Yes. And that was really fun, but... We had to file appeals. We had to file appeals, get our records from the doctor, and our doctor is so understanding and she went above and beyond to help us yeah. um, but that was that's I know that this is a lot but if you want to keep your benefits you you need to do all of these things and if you get an email from the Teamsters Western Region and Local 177 Healthcare Plan, open it. Right away. Read it. <laughs> Read all of it. Because it says anything about Cobra, 
co- if it says it, or if it says anything about you have lost coverage from this time to this time, you need to contact them and find out why. You need to contact Sam or your business agent at the local, and you need to let them know what is going on. You need to constantly be communicating if there's any issues mm-hmm. with your disability or any information that you've gotten from them that talks about you losing coverage for any period of time. It is, you need to stay in constant communication. Please do not go to work for an hour just so that you have worked time. That is not okay. Your doctor has not cleared you to go back to work or whatever the case may be, don't let them tell you to go clock in for an hour. They tried that. That's illegal. Don't, do not do that. So, <clears throat> the other thing that is really, so on this one when it talks about HR, for, for the Ontario WACA employees, our HR is the HR office that is outside by customer count. Yes. Um, Don't try and go there if it's full of new hires and they're working on badges and just, but you have to do it and they are banker's hours, I call it. Yeah, it's like eight to four. Something like that, but so it's not you, but during that's your the, working That's morning. the only HR that we currently can go to. Um, this is an ongoing issue. We, we know that it's an ongoing issue because they've eliminated HR within the building that it makes it very difficult for a lot of us to get a lot of these this paperwork done. Yes. Um, we know that there's been issues where sometimes people are in the hospital. Um, if you have a case where you're in the hospital, you need to make sure if you're having somebody, a family member come and fill this out, that the top portion of this is completely filled out, that that family member has your employee ID number, that they have all of this information filled out, that they have your last day of work that you had worked and that when they if they're going to take this in there for you into HR to fill this out for you that they also have your probably your ID so that they can verify HR can verify who they're you're fill, they're filling this out for and that they have all this information your last date of work and your employee ID so that they can verify that like if if my husband was coming to fill it out for me I would give him all of that information so that when he goes to HR He can fill it out. Also, when you go back to work, if you are a ramp employee and you know you're going back to work, if you've been out for eight months, yes, please, two weeks, three weeks. I I would say at least three weeks prior. I think we went in a month. Yeah, we did. Prior to returning to work and fill out the paperwork to get your background check done if you're a ramp employee or in a position where you need a background check fingerprinting and and all that it takes time and you don't want to be not be able to return to work because of this so make sure you go in and talk to them and find out what you need what you need to do what you need to bring um go into hr and let them know you're returning to work on this date even though you're three weeks ahead of time and find out if you need to re-go back through your background check, you probably will, and redo everything and, and, if and you're, get the process started. And remember, if you're gone <laughs> for more than 30 days, you have to redo your training, usually. Yes, yeah, you're, especially if you're on the ramp, you're gonna have to yes. redo all of your training. So, And when you go back to work, you have to call the Hartford again, or go online, they have a return to work section. Um, and you just have to, like, the day that you go back to work, you have to go in and say, I've returned to work as of this date. Because they need to update that in UPS's system so they don't have you on leave of absence anymore. So, really quick, remember, full-timers get 12 months, part-timers get 6 months. If you're going out on disability, you need to know the last date that you worked. Then you need to, the first thing you need to do is you need to call... Teamsters Western Region Local 177. You need to get the paper. They're gonna. You can print it up online, or they can mail it to you. You, you need. You need to. June bugs. Sorry. You need to fill this paper out. Have your doctor fill it out, and HR has to fill this paper out. Then you need to contact the Hartford, and you need to fill out their packet. You can also fill that out online. 
then you're going to, once you have your dates and all your doctor's information, you're going to need to go on the EDD website. This is just for us here in California, in, in our region. So yes, this just applies to the members that are under the Teamsters Western Region Local 177 in California. This does not apply to anybody else in any other region. I don't, we, don't, we don't know how it works for you guys out there. Other states, I don't know how that works. Yeah, we have no idea. So, and then you have to go on the EDD website, not SSI, EDD, California Government website. You have to fill out that disability, uh, short-term disability yes. stuff, and then you need to call Anna at the local, and you need to let her know what your last day of work was. You would need to pull a withdrawal card you know, until you're taking a withdrawal card, and or you want to pay your dues, however you want to do it, and then you need to call Anna again when you're returning to work, what your return date is, and then you're returning to work, and you need to you need to be reinstated, and then you need to call the Hartford, and do or go online and do the return to work date that you're returning to work. Okay, so this is the whole process. If you guys have any questions at all about any of this, just leave leave a comment down below. Email us. Email us. We've or, gone through it. Yeah, or ask us a question on our Facebook page. And if you need to do an appeal, do it right away. Don't wait. Um, yeah, you have a it, time. There's a there's a limited amount of time to file an appeal. And it's a process. I, it's not an overnight. Yes, it's fixed. It's a process, and we had to both file two appeals to get our insurance back for that time that we had lost it. So it was not. It took six months. Yeah, six months to get it back from for those couple of months that we were off and we lost it. So yeah, and if you have to file an appeal, you're gonna really. My advice is to contact the Teamsters Western Region Local 177 and contact Sam Stewart. Because he, he was very helpful when it came to um, our appeals. Yes. So if you're in that situation, um, Sam is incredibly helpful when it comes to uh, any kind of disability issues. So, or you can contact your own BA, but we would suggest you contact Sam. So that's really where um, I think that pretty much covers. Uh, Workers' comp is a whole nother monster and as safe as we are at work, I oh, guess yes. nobody should be on workers' comp. No. 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 We, have, we have safety staff. UPS is very safe under Article 18. Can you say this now? I'm surprised. <laughs> you said that with a straight face. I did. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh, oh wow. But that's, that's a whole nother issue. And if you're going to be <laughs> out longer than 12 months, then you're transferring over to a long-term disability, and that is a whole other issue as well. This is just short-term disability and who you need to contact, and we will put the links up for all of this. But if you have any questions, please ask. We're more than happy to help you, and we've been through it. And FMLA. FMLA, yeah, is, FMLA. Is, is pretty much the same process the only difference is you that you have don't have to, to fill, fill out this form this but you still have to contact Anna you still have to go through EDD you're still going through the Hartford you are contacting the Western region and but it's only 12 weeks you only get 12 weeks of FMLA yes if you need to be out longer than that then yes. you are going to have to go to the disability yes so that's the difference between FMLA and disability. And so. make sure that the Hartford codes you disability if you're going to be out for eight months as opposed to the 12 weeks for FMLA because that was, I guess that was our biggest That was issue. our biggest issue was, yeah, they wanted to How they coded transition us. us and you can't transition because you don't have any hours worked right. going from FMLA to disability. So you need to make sure that they code you the right way from the gate from going from right away so so this form from the teamsters western region and local 177 healthcare plan the hartford they will send you your packet edd has a it's all online with edd and i would suggest online regardless because sitting on hold waiting for them on the phone is 
a terrible thing. Online is so much easier. And Anna. So those are your steps. Questions, please ask. We are more than happy to help you. Absolutely. We good? Yep. Take the June bugs away, man. If you have any questions, Forky. ask Forky. Forky has questions. I All right. No. I think we're good. You think?